The next step is to crop the canvas to a square. Using a square image makes it easier to set up in 3ds Max. In this case, you need a canvas of 900 by 900 pixels to accommodate the largest image or layer, which is the top view. One way to achieve this is to create additional grid lines. You will need two vertical grid lines at the 450 and 1350 pixel positions, and two horizontal grid lines at the 50 and 950 pixel positions. Once this is done, use the Crop tool to reduce the canvas to the area within the grid lines. Before you save these out and use them in 3ds Max, it is a good idea to give them a blueprint look. Aesthetics aside, remember that selections in 3ds Max are white and therefore difficult to see against the white background. Change the foreground color to pure blue, RGB00255. Create a new layer at the top and fill it with that color. By default, the newly created layer hides everything beneath it. Set the blending mode to multiply and bring down the opacity to about 30%. The paper is now bluish like you would expect on a blueprint, but the ink is still just black. Add a new layer on top of this one, fill it with the same blue color, but this time set its blending mode to lighten. You now have a nice blueprint look. Finally, you need to save these references out as separate JPEG files. Start with the side view and name it Side JPEG. You can then hide the side layer and save out the file Nose JPEG. Finally, hide the nose view and save out top JPEG. If you wish to keep your layers, you may want to save the file in the image editing application's native format, such as PSD. In 3ds Max, begin by creating a plain primitive in the top view, Set it to be 900 by 900 units in size to match the size and aspect ratio of the saved bitmaps. Set the width and length segments to 1. Center the object at 000. Make all the viewports shaded, F3, and using Edge Faces mode, F4. Finally, disable the grid, G, in all viewports. You are now ready to create and apply material to this object. Use a standard material and set it to be fully self-illuminated 100% so it is not affected by any lights in the scene. Drag out the diffuse color input and choose bitmap. You will start with the top reference image of the airplane. Enable Show Map in Viewport. If the image appears fuzzy on the plane object, here's what you need to do. Go to Customize Preferences, and in the Viewports tab, under Configure Driver, make sure the options that read Match Bitmap as closely as possible are enabled. If you have to enable these options, save your file and reopen it to view the changes. Now that you have the top view in place, use it to create the front view. 
Using angle snap, shift and rotate the plane to create a 90 degree copy on the x-axis. In the material editor, select all the nodes and duplicate them using shift drag. At the map level, ensure show map in viewports is still enabled and replace the top view with the side view. Apply the newly created material to the copied plane. Similarly, use the side view to create another 90 degree copy, this time on the Z plane. As you did earlier, set up a third material based on the nose reference and then apply it to the copied plane. You now have three reference planes with the three required images sharing the same center point. The planes are 900 by 900 units in size. Using the Move tool, move them by half that distance in the appropriate directions so they look like size of a box. Finally, it is usually a good idea to freeze these reference planes before you start modeling. However, Freezing an object grays out the bitmap applied to it. You first need to right click the object, access its properties and disable the show frozen in gray option. You can then safely freeze the reference planes and start modeling. 